we were actually inspired by the Terminator 2 uh, video, T-1000. And it, that idea, basically the idea that the mass for the object could come from the liquid underneath it. Carbon is revolutionizing how people design products. And uh, we've cracked the code on how to make polymeric products at scale, and therefore unleashing the power of digital manufacturing, digital design, and all the opportunities that that has to make the unmakeable and have people's dreams on what they want to design come to, come to fruition. So we figured out a chemical way to maintain that liquid, liquid interface, and still grow an object. And we invented a very special window that is not only optically transparent, but it's also permeable to oxygen. And oxygen and light work in polar opposite ways to allow us to take the liquid underneath it, like the puddle, and have that become the mass for the object that's growing. It allows you to go really fast, and that opens up the opportunity for durable materials that can make end use parts while you create these designs. What you get out of the printer is the final product. Whereas in traditional 3D printing, a lot of it is prototyping. And also the challenge that you have with traditional 3D printing is the inability to scale. 3D printing has been around for 25 years or so. And um, it's been derived from a mechanical engineering culture, which was really layer by layer, very precisely doing one layer at a time. As chemists, we came up with a chemical approach that allows us to grow parts. So that's in a whole different ball game. It's a fundamentally different approach for doing the process of building and creating these parts than historically has been developed in the past. So if you think about when you're designing and building a car or a medical device or a running shoe or a football helmet, you need lots of different materials. And so polymers is what we do. You need properties of a wide variety in order to make functional end products. So we've actually developed a, a range of uh, properties, a range of materials, a range of resins that have the properties that actually are able to be final parts. Mechanical engineers have been taunting everybody for decades about the value of a lattice. Lattice, you think about building bridges and building buildings where every strut is a part and you can easily imagine doing that. But when you make a thing like a, a running shoe, something like this where you have a wide range of struts or a football helmet, where there's 140,000 different struts. That's unmakeable using traditional manufacturing, and therefore this whole branch of science, this whole branch of material science, has not been accessible commercially because you couldn't really scale it up or make it. And the power of this, this lattice structure is, for example, in the Adidas 4D shoes, it returns energy to the runner. Whereas here, with the Riddell helmet, it actually dissipates energy, so it improves impact absorption and player protection. Different types of lattice doing different things all around controlled energy. We then build the software tools to take advantage of the printability of what we can make and our resins. So we now have cloud-based computing, finite element analysis, uh, conformal lattices that allow designers to design what they want, and then we can populate a primitive CAD drawing with a wide range of lattices and the user can specify what mechanical properties they need in different regions and we can all automate this in a cloud and it really integrates design with manufacturability with end use function in ways that no one's ever seen that come together quite like it does today. We've just launched an initiative working on a 100% recyclable resin for the dental space. Aligners that are made um, are typically made with dental models. And those plastics traditionally are just dumped in landfills. So what our ma amazing materials team has been working on is a new process that allows, once those mo models have been made, we can pulverize them into powder, convert that into a next generation of liquid resin that we could use to make other products. So we decided to go with a subscription model. First of all, that enables cloud-based computing and all the over-the-air software upgrades. But more importantly, it future-proofs a customer from obsolescence. For our small printer, it's about $70,000 a year. For our large printer, it's at least twice that. Digital's impacted lots of different sectors of the economy, but manufacturing has really not been tapped because no one's been able to scale a fabrication technique digitally going forward, and that's what we break through.